Good morning. Got a Honda Pilot in the shop today. Going to be doing a piston ring job. It's kind of common on these uh, newer V6 Hondas. The piston rings start to fail and they follow spark plugs and they develop a misfire. This one had a misfire in cylinder two. The whole rear bank has uh, fouled plugs from oil consumption and even cylinder four. So let's get into this. So in order to do this job, obviously we have to remove uh, the pistons since we're doing the one, two, and three. Uh, the rear bank needs to be pulled off and the front bank needs to be pulled off because we're doing cylinder four. Cylinder four doesn't always cause uh, problems so be sure to always check that spark plug and see if it's fouling. So the plan of attack we have to remove all of this intake stuff. Uh, we get down to the cylinder heads, pull those. In order to pull those we gotta remove the timing belt and the exhausts and then we got to remove the oil pan on the bottom and then we are able to access the rods and we'll push the rods up through the block after the heads are removed. All right, first things first, I'm going to drain the uh, fluids. Got the coolant draining, oil draining. And I pre-sprayed, like always, the exhaust hardware. These are a little rusty, hopefully these aren't stuck. And I usually remove all the wheels and that's so that I can drop this thing all the way down to the ground because I'm short and it's hard to work in the engine bay. So we're going to go back up and work on the top. Another short people trick, use your tire as a step. And leaning into this engine bay is not fun so you're going to be hearing me making a lot of funny noises using my core to hold myself upright. Removing this little pipe from this intake boot can be super tricky, so I always use vice grips just to hold the clamp open. And then I sp sometimes spray penetrating oil in there, and then you just kind of force this beast out. Here I'm removing the battery and there's a side tray, it's not necessarily the whole tray. And then I undo the fuse box from that tray. At this point I go on to start unplugging the throttle body. And now I'm just working on getting all these hoses off of this upper intake manifold so that I can remove it.
think he really loves this guy. He's really defending him. Sometimes it's always the stupidest things that hang you up on these jobs, like these stupid hoses. I got the intake manifold off. Next step, got to work on the harness, power steering pump. I'm going to pull the whole harness over this direction. Uh, we need to remove all of this cooling stuff here that attaches both heads. And we're going to move on to doing the timing belt removal. making a mess so I always cover these with caps that I've just collected over the years like this is an AC cap that comes with AC compressors <music>
break these side mounts loose with a hand ratchet just because it's steel bolts going into aluminum and sometimes the the impact gun can damage those threads Later in the video, I'll show the markings on these cam gears when you have to line it back up to put the timing belt back on. timing belt tensioners are notorious for leaking and they end up causing like a knocking noise coming from the timing belt area. Okay, I got the timing belt off. Now we're gonna keep working on getting the harness off. I'm going to undo all the injector clips here, then I'm going to unbolt the fuel rails and pull the injectors with the rail and just put it off to the side. Then we should be able to get the harness out of the way and we can work on the valve covers.
titrating oil is the best thing ever invented, so just use it. You gotta be mindful when prying on these to pry straight up. You don't want to go too much at an angle because you don't want to break the tips of these injectors. It's just a tedious task of unplugging all of these connectors and further down here in the front there's a AC compressor connector that I took off off camera This cable here is from the alternator that runs to the fuse box. I also removed this off camera. I sound like I'm struggling here because I'm basically doing a hyperextension for an extended period of time. It's like working the heck out of my core muscles. If you've ever worked on one of these uh, pilots, you know that the engine is sunk down in the engine bay. Making good progress here. Got these lower manifolds off. Valve covers are all clear of the harness. And I pulled the coils. So I'm gonna work on all that cooling stuff next.
these snap-on coolant hose tools are like priceless. I use these things all the time to break the seal where the hose hoses attach. I usually dip the end in grease and go in. You just kind of work it around and then you can slide the hose off. This EGR pipe also has two 12 millimeter nuts that go down to the front catalytic converter. I removed those off camera. And this coolant pipe has two bolts and four nuts total. Uh, there's two nuts on the rear head, two nuts and two bolts on the front head. Well, getting this thing off is a huge pain. It makes a big mess. But these lower, these lower nuts here, pretty hard to get to get a wrench on. So you just got to be persistent. But the only thing left holding the heads on are the exhaust manifolds and obviously the head studs under the valve cover. So I'm gonna work on removing the exhaust now. I might not film the stuff on the back of the head, it's four nuts, it's kind of hard to get back there and they're actually kind of a pain in the butt to crack loose so you might not get to see that. This is a look at the rear catalytic converter. There's four nuts holding it on. 
These bolts are such a nightmare. lower exhaust off so while I'm down here I'm just gonna remove the oil pan this here is a shield over the crank position sensor as soon as you remove this then you can unplug the crank position sensor which is easier said than done Okay, the pan's off. I took the baffle off so now you see I can have access to the bottom of the rods. I'm gonna go back to the top, unbolt the head, and we'll get that off, and then we'll push these pistons up through the block. If you wanna get jacked, just do cylinder head jobs every single day. You'll get huge. That's my fitness advice for the day. And of course, when you're unbolting these, you go from the outside in, the opposite of, you know, torquing it back on.
cylinder head is removed. It's funny actually, cylinder one, which is this one, it's one, two, three, actually looks like it's burning the most oil. But cylinder two is the one that was fouling the plugs pretty rapidly. It's kind of interesting how that works. So I'm gonna start pushing these out. I'm gonna push out number three first since those are already down at the bottom. This is the bottom of the cylinder head. So the left one is cylinder one, middle one is cylinder two, the right one is cylinder three. So you can see that cylinder number two is already fouling. We just put another spark plug in here. So it was about to start misfiring again. It's from the bottom now. This is cylinder three here. These are 12.10 uh, millimeter. This is cylinder two and cylinder one is up there. So I'm just gonna loosen these, remove the lower cap. I'm gonna cover it with a rag, clean rag. And I'm gonna push the rod up and pull the piston out from the top. You can tap on the bottom of the pistons with a wooden dowel. It's an easy way to push it up through this uh, top part of the cylinder where oil builds up. <clears throat> All right, the piston is out. Got it wrapped up in a rag. I got the bottom of the rod cap in this. But it's pretty dirty. A lot of oil is making it past these rings. So I'm going to pull these rings. Let me grab some tools and clean this up. So here I'm just showing you where the oil rings lined with each other. They're supposed to be offset by 180 degrees, but they're completely lined up. And even the uh, oil ring spacer is pretty close to lined up with those. It's supposed to be 90 degrees off of those. Honda did release a technical service bulletin for this piston ring job where you get the misfire and in that it shows the part number for this tool that I'm about to use to clean these ring landings. Okay, don't freak out. I am using a screwdriver here, but I'll explain it a little bit.
hesitant to post this method of cleaning these pistons, but I've been doing this for a long time like this with the screwdriver. If you keep the screwdriver at a perpendicular angle, it just chips away at all the oil that just crusts on here. It's important though to spray it with the carburetor cleaner or parts cleaner first so it gets dry. And once it dries, it just chips off with the screwdriver. So you just gotta be careful you don't gouge anything. If you gouge one of these pistons, it's over. You gotta get a new one. Why are you mad, bro? So if you have the luxury of time, you could put these pistons to soak in some sort of degreaser, which would probably help you clean these easier. You wouldn't have to use a screwdriver, but I gotta get this done, so this is how I've been doing it for years. I imagine that other technicians probably don't even clean these, because you probably don't even have to, to be honest. I just do it because I like how it looks when it's clean. That's what it looks like after cleaning. Got all, like the whole side of the piston here is super clean. Again, I don't recommend this to anyone, but you know, do this method at your own risk. I use a really moderate pressure, and really it's almost on the back stroke like when you pull back on the screwdriver. So when it chips away everything, once it chips it all away, you can use these green pads and it cleans it all up. So I'm gonna copy these spacings here for the piston rings. And then I'm gonna use our piston ring compressor. And we're just gonna push these things in. These things are amazing. It's like the best tool that we have for pistons. So these here are the oil rings. We get the two top top and bottom ring and the spacer. And then this one here. This one here it says 1R. That's the top ring. This one says 2R. That's the second ring.
we got these rings installed. So there you can see the top ring on the bottom left. The second ring is on the top right. That's what we got. So I'm just going to dip this in oil like so. Get those rings nice and wet. And then I'm going to stick it into this piston ring compressor. As soon as I push the rods out, I always put a clean rag, brand new rag, on the crankshaft to protect it from anything falling onto it. And these connecting rods are torqued in two stages. 14 foot-pounds and then a torque to yield torque wrench at 90 degrees. So you just repeat all of these steps for all the remaining cylinders. So I'm gonna do that off camera and jump ahead. Got the front cylinder head off, same as the rear head. Got to undo these four nuts holding on the catalytic converter. It's so much easier on the front because you actually have room to get your wrench in there and turn the wrench. So I'm going to show you something on the front head here real quick. So Honda did something with this cylinder here. This is cylinder four, five, and six. Five and six don't have all of this hardware, which is why I believe those are not affected they don't start burning oil here's the rear head cylinder one two three they all have that hardware it said that this is for the eco mode and the eco mode causes this issue of turning the rings on the pistons they all line up and then the oil starts getting through to the combustion chambers starts burning oil there's the spark plugs from the rear bank and the spark plugs from the front bank. See the ones on the left don't look too bad. That's cylinder five and six. So just pulled cylinder four. I don't know if you can see that, but this bearing doesn't look good at all. So we're gonna get replacement bearings for the cylinder. Cylinder two is the same. It's on standby right there. But it's all clean and ready to go back in as soon as those bearings get here. Alright, so a couple days later, the bearings finally came for both of those pistons. So I'm going to install these bearings on the rods. And I'm going to throw these new pistons in get these heads back on. There's those old bearings we just replaced. Number two had the worst ones. Here's our pile of piston rings for replaced and a messy workstation. There's tons of rags everywhere. Alright, we got three pistons cleaned and re ringed. And then number four. That's what they look like before. I'm gonna clean off all this carbon buildup, uh, just the loose stuff out of the cylinders can't really do much that's built up on the piston without removing the piston but I'm sure those two are fine as we discussed earlier it's always one two three and four that fail 
So I'm actually behind on this job, so in the essence of saving time, I'm not going to film the reassembly, and I'll come back when this thing's running. I set up the GoPro here to get a time lapse of the head installation and torquing down the head bolts. Uh, it's a three-step process. You use a normal torque wrench and torque them to 22 foot-pounds in the first stage. Then you move on to an angle-style uh, torque-to-yield torque wrench. And then you do two stages of 90 degrees. And here you see me using that regular torque wrench set to 22 foot-pounds. And I start in the middle and you move outwards. And then I switch to the angle style torque wrench set to 90 degrees and I do two steps at 90 degrees. One last important note, if you use brand new head bolts, there's actually a third step at 90 degrees, but uh, all of this is in the service manual. And after about another 40 minutes of work, I got the valve covers on, coils on, all that cooling stuff on, and a whole bunch of other little things here on the top. And then we move on to the bottom to get the oil pan done. We have to clean all these surfaces of Honda Bond. And we bolt back on the baffle, the pickup, and then we can get the pan back on and the exhaust back on. And now our next steps is to focus on doing the timing belt. We want to line up our cam shafts. Here you can see the mark with the cam and the back plate on the rear cam. Here's the front cam, the mark in the back plate. And then we line up the crankshaft. There's two notches, one on the oil pump, one on the gear. And finally, we get our belt on. You route that thing on, bolt on the tensioner, and then pull the pin. Boom, set. And then all of this stuff back on the top, reassembled and ready for starting. So if you've made it this far, consider subscribing. I'm committed to uploading once a week and would love to have you along for the ride. And if you're getting any value out of these videos, drop me a comment. Just got this pilot reassembled. So let's start it, see if I forgot to plug anything in. Oil light, boom. No check engine, that's good. Alright, we are solid. She's running, sounds good. This job took a long time, took about seven hours to reassemble from uh, this morning when I had the heads off. So right now, I'm just gonna put this last intake piece on and then the top plastic cover for the motor and then uh, chest drive and then it's ready to be picked up if everything's good. What do you think, Marilyn?